So one question, well, actually, both questions that I have are extremely um, specific. Okay. So one coming from Sounds of Saint Elsewhere, um, they're asking if you can speak to the relationship between the toy industry and black consumers. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, and shout out to Saint Elsewhere, like that's old school. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, the toy industry is an interesting one and I, and I, I serve as a, an associate editor for one of our journals. Um, and I was actually reviewing a paper that someone just wrote on this topic. So this is not my work, but I just can't came across something that I thought was pretty mm-hmm. fascinating. Um, the toy industry is an interesting one in so far as, they in many ways find themselves kind of caught betwixt and between. So they, so this person uh, talked about um, these kind of Playmobil characters. It's the small little people um, mm-hmm. and that, you know, you can put them in sets with the pirate yeah, ship and yeah. so forth. And at one point there was a controversy because um, there was a person of color. They were painted uh, brownish and they were enslaved on a pirate ship. And so someone put up, you may remember this, right? And so someone put up a Facebook post, like, what are they doing? You know, I'm like, you know, this is, this is insane. Like, you know, and this is after 2000 and 2000, whatever, why are we still seeing this? Right. Um, And that post met with an inevitable kind of backlash. Right. And so the, the project was all about, kind of how the company manages this. Um, Because on the one hand, they build themselves as really taking history seriously, right? And so, you know, we want to present things in their accuracy. And sometimes that means that people could be offended, you know, yada, 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 right? But at the same time, they idealize in particular ways, right? Because of the audience. Um, And so- the paper was really about kind of how this company tries to to navigate these really complex waters, um, and and to do so, you know, largely without mm. making real change, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, so how, you know, how do you <laughs> how do you shut up the complainers, um, but 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 also without um, giving carte blanche to the sort of fascist backlash, right? Because that will also invite its own negative publicity. Um, And so, you know, what I kind of where I would sort of think about this is that the toy industry recognizes, um, the toy industry makes its money off cultural power, Mm -hmm. right? Why do people buy specific toys for their kids Right, because those toys have cultural power at a given moment. And for most toys, that moment is really quite fleeting, right? Like yeah. it's here today. And so those companies got it. They got to catch it like while it's happening and they got to do it in a way that they're not also killing it mm-hmm. um, at the same time. Right. And as it concerns matters of race and racism, that is it's a very difficult needle for them um, to try to thread. Um, because their hail consumer is working in middle class white people. They buy the most toys. But it is often other people that give toys their cultural power. <laughs> right? Um, yeah. You know, the cultural power c- doesn't come from middle class life, it comes right. from other kinds of lives. Mm-hmm, yeah. Right? That may be real or they may be imagined. They may be fantasy lives, but they don't come from middle class whiteness. And so the companies cannot disavow those things. And at the same time, they've got to keep their customers happy. Right. And that's sort of the, the insight there. But a lot of the stuff that you see that comes out, what's going on with toys, you can mm-hmm. sort of think about it. Um, you can use that lens to make it make sense. Okay. That, 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 thank you, Dave. 